morning. Welcome to Ambassador Baptist Church. We're glad to have everybody here this morning. Those that are watching by video, we are delighted to have you with us. And I see this morning everybody seems to be smiling. Those of you that aren't smiling, the longer you don't smile, the longer the service will be. Oh, look at all those smiles. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for another day. Thank you for the sunshine. And the drying out, just pray that you'll meet with us today, that your Holy Spirit would move in a mighty way. We love you. We thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for answers to prayer. And Ms. Hazel got a job. We appreciate that. And we just ask now that you'll take total control of the service today. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, page 157. 157. Uh, 
uh, just like we do for Thanksgiving, come, you know, uh, wanting to, uh, to thank the Lord for something. Because that's kind of what we'll do for our afternoon service after the meal. Just do like a little Thanksgiving type service. Um, if you can't think of one, Pastor's going to choose you anyway, so you might as well get, you might as well get, uh, might as well get ready now. So, um, But anyways, uh, there is a sign-up sheet in the back, like I told you last week, uh, that there will probably be one soon. There's one back there, so please sign up so that we have a variety of food and everybody does bring the same things. Um, so just make sure that you uh, take, take a look at that and sign up, please, if you're there or if you're able to uh, come out to that. And... Um, just, just a reminder, you know, that, 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 you know, the weather and everything changes, but our God doesn't, right? Exactly. You know, I was, on the way in, I was listening to the Steels, and that, it's funny because I was listening to that song, Never Changes, and it goes right with what's on the front of our bulletin. It says, yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never glorify his name. something else, bring it. We'll eat it, amen? Yeah, that's right. And then whatever's left over, we'll 
we'll send home with you. But we're looking forward to having a great day. And uh, this is just for those that are interested. Uh, Redefined Quartet is singing today between Alito and Aneta on uh, Farm Market 5 at I think it's New Hope Baptist Church in their 11 o'clock service. So I sent them a, a note saying we're praying for you that you'll have a good day across town. And they sent a note back so they were also singing after the service if anybody wanted to come by. So if you just go out Highway 5 after you go through Alito and it's out there on the right if you want to go. I don't know. You're welcome to go as long as you're back here by 5 o'clock. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, so we're looking forward to a great day. Listen, bring family, bring friends. We're going to have a great time. We're going to set up in here this year. And so when you come that Sunday morning, we'll have the tables and chairs all set up in here. You just come in and sit. Then you can take notes and what have you. And uh, I might even break down that morning and have coffee and donuts. I don't know. Oh, man. Uh, get the crowd in here and get you warmed up. Amen. And we'll have our service, and then we'll just do our normal going around the block there and, and have a good time with food, and then just a short testimony time afterwards if anybody wants to share how God's been so good to us the last 12 years since we organized from the storefront over to here, that building, and then back to here. And we were just talking this morning about when Miss Yvonne came in that Wednesday night, and God told her to get up out of bed and go down there and come to church, and she well, did. Tell me that I went to bed early. She went to bed early. Oh, my God. She went to bed early, and God said, mm, no, 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 too early. Too early. But God works in mysterious ways, yes, amen? He does. And yes. so we love that. So if our men will come, we'll receive our offering for this morning because we got a room full of cheerful givers. Amen. Because God loves cheerful givers, and I know you guys love the Lord. It's been obvious over the last 12, 13, 14 years. And so we're just glad for what God is doing, Amen. And like Brother Tim said, he never changes. He's the same right. yesterday, today, yes, and forever. Is. Yes, he is. And so we're thankful for that as well. Let's pray. Our Father, we do love you. We do thank you for the years that you have blessed Ambassador Baptist Church, the opportunity that we've been here to preach the gospel, the families and the lives that have been touched by the gospel, those that have been saved and baptized. And so this morning, Father, I just pray as we prepare for another anniversary that we'll continue to give you the honor and the glory for all the blessings. I pray this morning that you will bless the offering that we're about to receive that allows this to take place. We pray for our missionaries this morning uh, that are preaching the same gospel around the world. We pray for David White as he prepares to graduate from high school and to go to Bible college, that you would be with him, bless him and his family, and thank you for the work that they're doing to help other churches, or not only here in America, but in Africa just recently, and pray that you'll continue to bless their ministry as well as all of our missionaries. And we'll give you all the praise because we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give.
the young people up in front. They all raised their hand. And I said, where were you at? We just sung it. Just sung it. <laughs> All right, page 159, page 159. <coughs> Would you be free from the burden?
we could be covered. Yeah. And so it goes throughout the whole Bible. So there is power in the blood of the Lamb of God. Man. Not my blood. Yeah. The only power my blood has is to tell me that my blood sugar is too high or too low. <laughs> too. You know? Scary stuff. Sometimes. But I want us to look because, because of the blood of the Lamb of God, we have redemption. We have forgiveness. We have sanctification, all the big fancy biblical words, amen? We have accessibility to God. Hey, look, we don't have to run into some cubicle, let a guy slide the door open, and Father, forgive me, because he can't forgive you. That's right. He can't do that for you. The guy in the white robe over yonder can't forgive you. That's right. I won't say any names, but there's no hope in the Pope. Watch out, man. He didn't shed his blood for you. That's right. And I'll get in trouble for that, but it's the truth. That's right. And this is truth, and I've been called to preach truth. And so if they don't like it, get saved. Yeah, come on now. Get Jesus, get the blood. That's right. I was watching or reading, I was reading a story or something this week about a young man that, that said, uh, oh, they were interviewing him, and he said, well, you know, I, I'm, I was Catholic growing up, but I hadn't been in church in a while. I was on one of those campuses, you know, where they're having all the... Yeah, and uh, the guy said, well, well, what happens when you die? He said, well, I go to, I think it's called purgatory. That's what he said. And, and I'll be there for a while, and then, you know, I'll, someone in my family, and I don't read that in the Bible anymore. No, sir. No. I don't even think it's in the Catholic Bible, unless they filled it in there somewhere. Because that's not what it's all about. It's about the blood. Yeah. And so we're going to look at the blood today. There's some things that are important about the blood. Five points, and we'll be done just like that, Brother Tim. Mm. Number one, the blood redeems that which is lost. Yeah. Yeah. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and Christ had to shed blood to make the covering for them, to cover their sinfulness. Now, that was all a picture going forward to when he came and died, shed his own blood once and for all. And so today we don't have to do sacrifices like that because when we accept him, the blood takes care of it all. Amen. And it redeems us. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 18. If you're there, if you've turned there already, if not, turn there. It says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, Received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ Amen. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The Amen. precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now in the Old Testament when they brought a sacrifice, it could not have uh, without spot, without blemish. It had to be perfect. Can you imagine how hard it may have, must have been in those days to find a perfect lamb? To bring, and, and I've just finished math or uh, the first five books of the Bible, and and what they had to do, what they had to bring, the sacrifices, and all that. I'm glad I live under grace today. Because it would have been hard to make it in those days. Yes, sir. I dare say, from what I've read, what they had to do, uh, none of us will be alive today. Has anybody here ever disobeyed your parent? Okay, we're dead. Watch out. I mean, that's just yes, what sir. God had. And so, uh, Redemption, redeem, means to gain or regain possession of something or someone in exchange for payment. So when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, we were separated from God. And so God sent his spotless lamb, his son Jesus, to die to do what? To redeem us, to bring us back together in relationship with God. Yep. And without that blood, without that redemption... We're just sinners on our way to hell. I'm thankful that God loved us so much. He loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, That's what God did for us. I'm thankful that Jesus loved us so much, being God, that he knew what he was going to have to go through, and he went through it for you and I. Yes, and he shed his blood to redeem us. And so because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden, you and I inherited a sin nature. Bunch of filthy sinners, you. When you look in the mirror, you're looking at a sinner. There's two types of sinners. A saved sinner and a lost sinner. That's right. Because we get saved, we're still sinners. Because when we get saved, we still sin. 
Do we not? Yes, sir. But thankfully, we confess that sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Man, don't we serve a great God? Yes, but in order to obtain deliverance from the slavery of sin, because that's what we are, we're slaves to sin, uh, a price had to be paid. Sin had to be paid for. You and I can't pay for it. You and I can't. Listen, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is yeah. death. When Adam and Eve sinned the garden, they died. They died spiritually and then eventually died physically. And so uh, the, 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 the wage, the payment for sin is death. Now, I want to encourage you this morning that eventually at some time, you're going to die because of sin. Because that's what the payment is. And so you're going to die. I know you're excited about that. And so the price of sin is death. So how do we get out of that? We have to be purchased. And so Christ purchased our sin by shedding his blood at Calvary. He paid the price. He paid the penalty. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7. Ephesians chapter 1, 7. Turn there because you need to see this. You need to understand it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7. The first part says... We gotta get back into the habit of turning into our Bibles, don't we? It's in the New Testament. <laughs> mean old preacher. Ephesians 1 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. blood. It doesn't say in whom we have redemption through your baptism or your <laughs> church membership down at Ambassador or that good life you've been living. It's his blood. Amen. His blood. Yep. There's power in the blood for such a worm as I. Amen? Amen. Or a sinner as I. <laughs> it's in the blood. That's right. It says so. And so according to God's word, Christ purchased our freedom from the bondage of sin. That means you and I are dead to sin. We really don't have to sin. We do. Because we walk in the flesh and not in the spirit. But we don't have to because the Bible says we're dead to sin. When you're dead to something, you're dead. dead. When we die, we're dead. We go in the ground. Body, it's dead. It just deteriorates. And so that word is it, it, derived from, and I looked this up in my little book that I can look up words in. It's derived from apolytrosis which is derived from the root word lutro, which was a term used to buy a slave to set them free. So you and I are redeemed. We're slaves to sin, and Christ paid the debt and purchased us to set us free from being slaves to sin. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you can jump up, turn around, and just shout. And so we've been set free from sin. God sets you free yeah. through the blood. Yeah. Now, folks that aren't saved <clears throat> through the blood aren't set free. They're still slaves to sin. And they're all around us, are they not? And so he paid the price. But not only did he pay the price, he became the price. Yeah. It was him. That's the only sacrifice for our sin that God could accept. The perfect spotless lamb of God. Well, who was that? That was Jesus Christ. And so he came and he died and he redeemed us. Look at Revelation chapter number 5, verse 9 and 10. Future event, but ooh, I'm looking forward to it. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. You turn faster, we'll get done faster. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. Who's it talking about? Jesus Christ. Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God, because Adam and Eve separated us from God, has redeemed us to God, how? By the blood. By the blood. Who's redeemed? Out of every kindred and tongue and people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Yeah. When are we going to do that? During the millennium. We're going to come back on white horses, 
He's going to speak and just wipe it all out, set up his kingdom on earth, and we're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Amen. Cain, John, what's the <laughs> Over the province of whatever, I don't know. But we're going to rule and reign. Why? Because we have been redeemed by his blood, brought back to God after being separated by sin. And so the blood redeems us. How many of you are glad you're redeemed today? Say amen. amen. If you're not redeemed, don't say amen. <laughs> Secondly, the blood provides the forgiveness of sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood. Back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. I should have told you to hold your place there, shouldn't I? Some of you may have. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. We read the first part. In whom we have redemption through his blood. So we're redeemed by the blood, but what else? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Got S in there. Does that cover all sins? According to the riches of his grace. Sins. Covers it all. Isn't that great? And so we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Now, sometimes folks ask us to forgive them. Wife looks at the husband. The husband says, honey, forgive me. And she says, I forgive you. And she buries the hatchet and leaves the handle sticking out. So some day later, pull that thing out and say, you remember? God covers it all. Oh, Amen. He doesn't remember. As far as the east is from the west, the deepest parts of the seas, I'll remember your sin no more. Whew. I'm glad for that. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but I have sinned since I've been saved. Probably this week, maybe even today, I don't know. But I'm thankful for his forgiveness. How many know Charles Haddon Spurgeon? He said, redemption and forgiveness are so put together as to look as if they are the same thing. Assuredly, they are so interlaced and intertwisted that there is no having the one without the other. So you ask the question, how is it that there should always uh, need to be redemption by the blood in order for forgiveness of sin? Because they lock in one another. Why did he die? He died to shed his blood to forgive us of our sins. That was why he died. And so redemption through blood is where we get there's power in the blood. There's not any other thing that you can tell me that washes away your sin, that covers your sin, that takes care of your sin. It doesn't say redeemed by the love of the Savior, does it? No, sir. He loves us. Love is what brought him here. Yep. It doesn't say you're saved through the power. It says you're saved through the blood. Amen. And if those folks don't like bloody religion, I feel sorry for them because they can't get saved. Because it's through the blood. Uh, it's his love that brought him. It's his blood that saves us. Redeemed through his blood. It's all throughout the Bible. You can find it everywhere. 1 John 1.7 1 John 1.7 The Bible makes it very clear without the shedding of blood there is no remission. 1 John 1.7 How many of you are walking in the light today? Say amen. It's kind of weak. I hope you're all walking in the light. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So if you're fussing with your brothers and sisters, you must not be walking in the light, correct? I'm just, I'm asking. I mean, this, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. So if we're not walking in the light right, we don't have fellowship with one another. We fuss and fight. Yeah. There's a lot of churches like that. Glad it's not here. Right. We must all be walking in the light. But look at the next part. And the blood, not the love, not the power, not. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from what? A-L-L. -L, all sin. Notice it's singular there. But up above when we looked at it, it was plural. All sin. It covers it all. There's not a sin that you can commit that it doesn't cover unless you just reject him. Then 
and you have no forgiveness. It covers it all. And it's what that covers it, the blood. There's nothing that you and I can do that will take away from the power of the blood and from the work that Christ did at Calvary. There's not anything. We sing it, and I didn't put it on the list because I was trying to get wonderful working power in there. But what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's what Hebrews 9.22 teaches. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And so, how many believe the Bible this morning? Amen. Matthew 26, 28. I'm having a good time. How about you? Amen. I'm almost to point number three. We'll be done before three o'clock. Matthew 26, 28. Some of you needed to laugh or smile, so I thought I'd throw that out there. Matthew 26, 28. For this is... My blood. Your words in red. Who's saying it then? Jesus. Jesus. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. how many sins? Sin. Plural. That's right. For the remission of sins. The word remission is the word remit, which means to forgive. And remission is the act of releasing the offender from the penalty of their sin as if that offense never occurred. Because when God looks at you under the blood, you know what he says? What sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. They're under the blood. And so our sins must be the color of the blood of Christ, because when they're under blood, can't see them. I was working on the bulletin and trying to put color in there, and I hit the wrong thing. And so when the color came up, you couldn't see the words because it was the same as the words. <laughs> it all disappeared. That's what our sin does under the blood. I sent a copy of the bulletin to my wife and said, it's not Debbie Perfect, but it's a bulletin for today. And she said, awesome. <laughs> she has an awesome husband. <laughs> It releases us. When God looks, he says, he doesn't see our sin. It's been blotted out. It's gone. Amen? Amen. Ooh, getting goosebumps. <laughs> Thirdly, you thought those two points were good. Wait till this one. The blood sanctifies. One of the big fancy words. Sanctification sanctifies. It means to set apart the redeemed as a special possession of God. Here you are over here, a sinner, going to die in your sin on your way to hell. You get saved. You get sanctified. And God takes you and sets you over here, sets you apart. You're one of his possessions now. You're an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. You're a part of the family. And Christ says you're in his hand. And nothing That's right. can pluck you out. Tells me you can't lose your salvation That's like right. some folks say. Oh, no. And Christ said that he is in the Father's hand. There's nothing going to pluck him out of the Father's hand. Nothing going to pluck you out of his hand. There you have it. You have been set apart. It starts in the heart when you get saved, and then it just kind of works its way out to your outward living. And so you let your light shine, and the world says, oh, that brother Rusty, man, he's glowing with Jesus. He's, yeah, a, he's a child of the king, and look at him, and I want what he's got. Amen. And God sets us apart for service in his kingdom, to serve and to let our light shine and to be salt and to give the gospel to others. So they can get saved and become what we are. And, and it, it separates us. We're, we're set apart. Now, it doesn't just separate us from sin only, but it separates us from this old nasty world. What does Romans 12, 2 say? And be not conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I couldn't think of a better book to renew your mind than this book right here. Amen. God said it will hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against God. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. He said to study it, study it to show God that we are good workmen. That we don't need to be ashamed. That we're rightly dividing the word of truth. And so sanctification is fellowship with God who is inside of us. That's what Audrey Murphy said. Audrey Murphy wrote a lot of books on prayer. I've got all of them. They're good books. He said that it, it's us fellowshipping with God as he dwells inside of us. The Holy Spirit speaking to us. We speak to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit goes to God on our behalf through a mediator, Christ Jesus. This thing, oh, this is, I read this story, and you've probably read it, maybe if you've ever read the Daily Bread. I used to read them all the time, but I don't give them anymore, but this story stuck out. A young woman, a young girl accepted Christ as her Savior and applied for membership in a local church. The deacon said, were you a sinner before you received the Lord Jesus Christ into your life? She said, yes, sir. He said, well, are you still a sinner? She said, to tell you the truth, I feel I'm a greater sinner than ever. Then what real change have you experienced? She said, I don't quite know how to explain it, she said, except I used to be a sinner running after sin, and now I'm a sinner running from sin. The deacon said, welcome to the fellowship of our church. And it says that... Uh, her consistent life that she lived showed that she truly was converted. And that's how the world knows. Yep. That's how they know if we're saved or not. By our consistent walk, our sanctification, our living for Him. That, that what started in here is shining through. Now your globe may be a little dirty. Your temple may be a little dirty. needs some cleaning so your light can get out. And you can do that. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6. We almost done. Sorry, 2.30. We'll be done before 3 o'clock. Revelation 1, 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Who washed us in his blood. Do I look all blood covered, Brother Grapes? I'm washed in the blood. Amen. Wonderful power in the blood. <coughs> able to wash all your sins away. Able to save your soul. Able to give you eternal life. Amen. All because of the spotless lamb, Jesus Christ. But you know what? Not only is there sanctification, but you'll love this one. The blood provides access mm. to the throne of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Told you in the beginning, you don't need to run to that little box. Because that's not the throne of God. That's the throne of man. Yep. True. Ephesians chapter number two. You gotta turn here. You just gotta you just gotta get this. Ephesians chapter two, verse 12, 13, and 14. Access to the throne room. Man. You know, in the Old Testament, there was only one person that could come into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And he could only do it one time a year. And he had to be right with God. Sure. <coughs> that was the only one. But when Christ died at Calvary, something happened. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now is Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off, excuse me, now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off, any of you here have ever been afar off? Are made nigh by the blood. 
The membership of Ambassador Baptist Church. No. The baptism of Ambassador Baptist Church. No. Are made nigh by the blood yes. of Christ. Yes, sir. The blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He's the peace that passes all understanding. He is our peace who hath made both one. Now listen to this last part. And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Between us who? Between us and God. When Christ died at Calvary, the Bible says that the veil was rent from top to bottom. Well, what was the veil separating? The holy place from the holy of holiness. The place out here to the place where God met. It was ripped in half. It opened up for you and I. And now you and I today, we can come directly to Abba Father. We can come directly to the throne of God. We can just come straight to Him. Amen. You can come to the God that spoke everything into existence today and speak to Him like I'm speaking to you today. Now, we don't know how to speak to Him because we still have a sin nature, but the Holy Spirit and the Son know how to speak to Him. They speak His language. Yeah. We give it to Him in sinner language and they transpose it and turn it around into God language so that God can understand it. And so through the sovereign grace of God, it says he hath quickened us. That's pretty fast, isn't it? Quicken here means made alive. We were dead in trespasses and sin. He has quickened us. He's made us alive with Christ, raised us up, and has set us down in heavenly places. Brother Graves, i got a seat up there somewhere already sitting in it, spiritually speaking. Right there on my porch in my mansion, waiting for you to come by for some coffee. Amen. When we got saved, our place was reserved. It's there. As if we were there. Yes, sir. The only thing hindering that is death or the trump of God. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. i got to get going. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 22. This will blow you away. How many of you believe God loves you today? Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 22. For it pleased the Father. It pleased Him. When our kids do good, it pleases us, does it not? For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. Adam and Eve sin in the garden separates now. Christ's blood has reconciled us unto himself. By him I say whether they were things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works or sin. Yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. To, prevent, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So reconcile means to restore relationship between. It means to cause to coexist in harmony. And so now you and I that were once sinners, thanks to the blood of Jesus Christ, we have been reconciled, brought back to God in harmony. So when he sees the blood, he sees the Son. In Egypt, when he saw the blood... He passed over. Now he sees the blood, and, and we're in harmony. It says, present us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. And so through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed at the cross, we are no longer alienated. You didn't know you were an alien, did you? Maybe that's why they're going to say when the rapture takes place, aliens came and took us out. We're no longer alienated. We're no longer separated from God. We are His, in His family, by His blood, reconciled to God. Makes me just want to shout. <laughs> Biblical reconciliation is the process of two previously alienated parties, you and I as sinners, and God, a holy God, coming with, to peace with each other. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to read this real quick. You can look, write it down and look it up. Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. 
And so now, because of what Christ did, we can come to God through his flesh, through what he did for us at Calvary. Isn't that great? Be kind of like making an appointment with the president. And they'd ask you, well, who are you? Where are you from? What do you want to see him for? He's a busy man. Don't have time for you. Can we tend you to someone else? And then he says, well, I'm the president's son. Oh, by all means, go in. You and I, when we got saved, we became children of God. Amen. And when we approach him, it's like, that's one of my children. By all means, come on in. And we can go in. Amen. Finally, number five, the blood assures us of ultimate, eternal victory. Hey. Victory in Jesus, my Savior. We've got victory. Yes, sir. We have victory. Colossians 2, 13-15 says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened. The word quickened means to make alive, to send current back to. You cut your extension cord, you rejoin them together, what are you doing? You're making more current. You're making current come back together. Together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. Woo. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us. What did he blot it out with? His blood. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Nailing it to the cross. Try and get it to sink in. Nailing it to the cross. Amen. He took our sins, put his hands and feet out there, and <laughs> nailed it to the cross. Now that you're awake. <laughs> nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled principalities and power. What does the Bible say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the devil and all that stuff. That, and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Through the blood, amen? amen? He overcame principalities and powers, and one day you and I will overcome them. Amen? And so, today, because of the blood, you and I can be saved. Today, because of the blood, our sins can be washed away. Today, there is wonder-working power in the blood. And as we stand this morning with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, in Revelation, they're talking about in chapter 12, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's how we overcome today. By the blood of the Lamb. Romans chapter 8 tells us that you and I have been made more than conquerors. How? Through him that loved us. Who is it him that loved us? It was Jesus who loved us and died and shed his blood for our sins. And so today there's nothing Absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And if you're here this morning, you've never been saved, you need to come and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and His blood to forgive your sins and to save your soul. If you're watching my video and you've never been saved, you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ because it's the only thing that can cover your sins. It's the only thing that can wash away your sin. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why He died at Calvary. Listen, if there was any other way, Jesus shed His blood was a waste of time. But he did that because he loved us. And he provided a way back to the Father. Maybe you're here today and you're saved on your way to heaven, but you're just not living right. Maybe there's some things that you're allowing in your life. Listen, Jesus said, if you'll confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But don't try to go into the Holy of Holies and come to God with all that in your life. That's why the high priest had to go in there to, to get forgiveness of the sins of the people. God's not going to deal with dirty vessels, but he will forgive you and cleanse you so that he can use you. Amen? And so this morning, I don't know, maybe God has spoken your heart about something. Today would be a good day to take care of it. If it's salvation, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. You may not be here tomorrow. There are people this week that I read about that died in crashes and, and hit and runs and all kinds of stuff. 18-year-old boy crashed a plane. He was flying and died. We don't know. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. So we need to be sure that we are saved. We're under the blood. Because that's the only thing that can save us. That's the only thing. So are you under the blood today? If you are, 
then it ought to shine through. And the world ought to be able to see it. Amen? Father, we love you today. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you loved us enough that you sent him to pay a sin debt that we could not pay, to reconcile us back to you, to open the door to separation by destroying the veil that was set between us so that we can come directly to you. I pray this morning that everyone that's hearing my voice knows beyond a shadow of a doubt they're saved and on their way to heaven and that they will uh, live their life in such a way that the world can see that so that they might be drawn to you through us. I pray for those that may not be saved listening to this message that they will come and fall upon their knees and call upon you to forgive them of their sins and to save their souls and to wash their sins in your blood. We'll be careful to give you all the praise for it. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you for being here tonight. We'll be back at 5 o'clock. Be safe out there. There's a lot of crazies in the world, amen, that aren't under the blood.